What's going on everybody, my name is Pat. I'm the voice behind 99% of what you're gonna hear on this channel. And today we are gonna do a spoiler-free review of season two of Shrinking. Now this is a show that I don't recap. Uh, it was just suggested to me. It's a half hour comedy, but yet a little bit of a drama as well. And the selling point of this show, well, there wasn't much. It's really hard to sell this show. It's like, hey, um, there are these therapists What's going on everybody? My name is Pat. I'm the voice behind pretty much everything you heard here on this channel. Today we are doing a spoiler-free review of the Apple TV Plus show Shrinking Season 2. Now unfortunately, Shrinking is a show that I don't recap, so I can't really tell you to go watch my recap if you've never seen the show before. What I would suggest though is that you stop watching this video after, after you let an ad run, all right? Let those ads run. And go watch season one, because it is well worth your time. But if you're unfamiliar, you don't feel like doing that, I'm gonna do a really, 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 really condensed recap of season one of Shrinking. Shrinking's about three shrinks who really need therapy. You've got Jimmy, you've got Gabby, and then you've got the elder statesman and Paul. Jimmy recently dealt with the death of his wife, and he's really had a tough time with it. She died via a drunk driver, and he kind of spiraled out of control. To make matters worse, He's got a 18, 19, 17, she's a teenager, um, year old daughter who really had to be raised by the neighbors as Jimmy just spiraled in a bout of drinking, drug use, hookers. Um, seems like a fun time, but it really wasn't. He finally got himself out of the ditch and he started going back to work and kind of looking inward as to all the really the, the pain that he caused his daughter in this moment, but also the support system that he had to go along with it. This show is written by Bill Lawrence, who did shows like Ted Lasso. It's also written and created, though, by Roy Kent, uh, who's well, it's Brett Goldstein, but he's probably better known as Roy Kent from Ted Lasso. So you got that power dynamic coming in for season two. And season two really picks up where season one left off, albeit probably a couple months later. Jimmy's still doing a really good job of bettering himself as both a father and a therapist. He's in a lot better place. But this season really, I think, focuses on uh, two key aspects. Forgiveness, which I felt like season one did, but this season does it at a heightened level. Um, and primarily the forgiving of the guy who ended up killing uh, Jimmy's wife. And then also, you've got a little bit of infidelity as well. I'm not going to say who it was or the context, but it comes up a few times this season. So if that's a triggering case for you, then I'd probably skip it. But this show is basically, yeah, that, that's, that's kind of season two in a nutshell. So the question is, is season two as good as season one? The short answer is this is the guilty pleasure yes. Like, this is the show that is a lot like other Bill Lawrence shows. I mean, this is Ted Lasso, but not as good because the characters in Ted Lasso were so bombastic and, and out there and unique and charismatic. And this show is more, I think, based in reality. I mean, you're not going to get, you know, a Coach Beard in this show. But you still have that, that like, wholesomeness that is a Bill Lawrence show. And, and it's dripping off the screen. And it was a show that is really, really tough to sell people. Like when I say to people, oh yeah, you should watch Shrinking, what's it about? Three shrinks who really need therapy. Great selling point. Like it's not a show that you really can sell. You really just have to watch it. And once you do, you'll see the, the beauty in this program where you have a, a shrink in Jason Siegel who has spiraled out of control, and understandably so, because his world came crashing down and he wasn't prepared for it. And then you've got the daughter who is dealing with teenage years, and then she's got her dad bringing home random women and drinking too much, and now she's being raised by the nosy neighbor who is nothing but kind, but is also really involved. You know, the dynamic of the characters is so wonderful and it it really is an awesome thing to watch on screen about how these characters 
really kind of interact and make themselves better and prop themselves up. And season two is right there with it. Like season two is a great example of, in season one, it was a lot of it was people helping Jimmy and another character, Sean, who is Jimmy's patient. So it was kind of that dynamic of like, we're going to help Jimmy. We're going to help Sean. Jimmy's helping Sean. Who's helping Jimmy. But this season, it really is about helping everybody because everybody has problems. And that's, right back to the set in reality of this show compared to Ted Lasso is like, yeah, everybody's got problems. Like I've got problems, you've got problems. And even the people that feel like they're probably, they have it the most together. Maybe the people that seem like they have it the most together, they probably don't. They're probably dealing with shit. And I think season two, it really dives deeper into it and does a great job with it. It, it, it really expands that world instead of really focusing on just Jimmy and, and the character Sean, this focuses on Paul's struggles with Parkinson's, Gabby's struggles with her family. Um, you've got Derek and Liz and their struggles of being parents and dealing with a new business venture of the food truck. Like, It really does a good job of focusing on the other ancillary characters and not just Jimmy and Sean, which I think season one was primarily about Jimmy and Sean. But this show is so good and it's 35, 40 minutes and it's paced a lot like a Ted Lasso where season one was about 30 minutes and season one of Shrinking was about 30 minutes and then the episodes got a little bit longer and you know now it's at 40 minutes and Ted Lasso did the same thing. And Ted Lasso, I think the beauty of it was we needed Ted Lasso when we got Ted Lasso. Middle of the pandemic, we get this show that is nothing but happiness and nothing but good vibes and a good feeling. And you came away from Ted Lasso wanting more of it because it just made you feel good. And this show is a lot like that, but it doesn't necessarily have the season one sunshine and rainbows that was Ted Lasso. There is more struggle in this show, but it also still has that comedic element thanks to Bill Lawrence and Brett Goldstein writing it. It, it still has that, it still has that you know, those moments where you're laughing out loud because you either relate to the character or it's just a ridiculous scenario all, all in general. So it, I, I think if this show were to come before Ted Lasso, then Ted Lasso would have been an even bigger hit. And this show would have been a bigger hit. I, I think this show has kind of flown under the radar because we had Ted Lasso first and everybody fell in love with that. And his follow-up show, i.e. Shrinking, I don't hear as many people talking about it as Ted Lasso, but they really should because I think this is a, a show too that it goes into something that I don't think a lot of people think about, which is your therapist is struggling with something. What are they struggling with? Like, yeah, they're trying to help you, but at the same time, they need help as well. And I think that that was a really, um, a really unique way of, of, of telling that, that point of view from a therapist's angle. I mean, obviously in Ted Lasso, we saw Dr. Sharon, the therapist, and that was a straightforward character of like, I am helping you. And, and they hinted a little bit at maybe an alcohol issue with her, but this show dives way more into it, but they do it in a way where you don't come away feeling like a piece of crap. Like you don't come away down depressed at all. In fact, you come away wanting more of the show and that's a really good indication of a really good show. So look, if you haven't checked out this show yet, and, and I gave you a really quick synopsis of it, but if you haven't checked out the show, do so. It comes out October 17th is, I think, the first two episodes of season two. Um, and it's, it's really, really good. And, it, and it, it was a show where I think it was around episode six, where there's an ending to episode, I think it was six, where it was like 1.30 in the morning, and I'm sitting here, and I'm like, Shh, I got to watch episode seven. I got to find out how this continues. Um, it was a show, well, it is a show, that I will sit there and be cracking up one minute, and then they will switch to another storyline, and, and I'm going through it. Like, emotionally, I'm sitting there just not ready for this, this heartstring, tug at the heartstrings moments. And, and I think this show does a really good job of just showing both sides. So, Shrinking Season 2 is... I think better than season one because of the fact that they expand on that world a little bit and they get in the other characters and you do care about the other characters. I mean, the character Paul is great. Um, the relationship between Gabby and, 
and uh, and Jimmy and, and how that unfolds and just all of it. So absolutely cannot suggest Shrinking Season 2 enough. If you get a chance, definitely check it out. It is worth the price of Apple TV+. Plus. I mean, not just that show, but other shows as well. Um, Silo's coming out with a new season. I can't wait to dive into that. So that'll about do it uh, for me. Thank you so much for getting this part of the spoiler-free review. Make sure to hit the, the thumbs up if you like this. Or smash it. Smash it so hard because I don't go to therapy. Um, and maybe by you me leaving a nasty comment and smashing the thumbs down, maybe you can make me feel so bad that I will end up going to therapy. So, um, yeah, I don't know. Uh, like, subscribe, I guess, share. Just let the ads run.